What's up, AU? My name is Kelly Ellum, and you are watching AU in View. We will be covering important news about events and people within the AU community, so stay tuned. Hey, I'm Salvador Rodriguez. Kelly and I will keep you updated on the latest news at Aurora University and around the community. Aurora University prides itself on having a safe campus environment, but no one's safe safety is guaranteed if there's an active shooter on campus. That's why Campus Safety is hosting ALICE, an active shooter survival training designated to evacuate potential victims quickly. ALICE stands for Alert, Lockdown, Inform, Counter, and Evacuate. It is important to have Campus Safety's phone number on speed dial because in a situation like this, you, don't, you want to get help as soon as possible. In the meantime, you will know how to survive until help arrives. On Monday, November 20th, Campus Safety will be hosting another active shooter training and Perry Theater from 8 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. The phone number for Campus Safety is as follows, 630-844-6140, and the email address is cpsafety at aurora.edu. At Aurora University, many students have it easy. Walking from classroom back to one's dorm is nothing compared to what some students in China are facing today. According to the Chinese Ministry of Environmental Protection, the air quality in 265 of the 338 major Chinese cities exceeded the national health standard for the last year. China is not the only place dealing with extreme air pollution. Unfortunately, there are 4.5 million people around the world that are exposed to air pollution and that are affected by the consequences such as heart and asthma attacks, strokes, and other various conditions. Next time you are late to class because it's too cold outside, just remember how truly blessed each one of us really is to study at a school with clean and healthy air to breathe deeply and think clearly. In 1989, five black and Latino teenagers were arrested and convicted for attacking and sexually assaulting a white female jogger in New York City's Central Park. The young men would spend several years in prison before they were found not guilty. The Central Park Five tells the story of the young men and how their lives were changed forever. The movie will be shown tonight, Wednesday, November 1st, in Tapper Recital Hall in the Shingothi Center at 7 p.m. Go to auartsandideas.com to register. For those of you who signed up for Fright Fest, remember the trip to Great America is this Saturday, November 4th. The bus leaves the STEM parking lot at 10 a.m., so be sure to arrive early so you don't get left behind. We will be taking a short break and we'll be back with AU in View featuring Dr. Kane, a biology professor right here at AU, so stay tuned. Welcome back AU, I'm Kelly Ellum. I am here with Dr. James Kane, assistant professor of biology at Aurora University, here to answer some questions about air pollution. Hi, welcome to the show. Nice to meet you. Can you tell the AU students a little about what you teach here? Sure, I teach uh, in the biology department most of the human side of biology, not as much plants and animals. So uh, mostly human biology, physiology, health, along those lines. Okay, so what can you tell us about our air pollution in the Chicagoland area and how it's changed in the last 10 years? Sure, so I do wanna add a disclaimer that um, I'm not an environmental biologist, but I do have some background as I've uh, read a lot about the health implications of air pollution. So I do have a good background, especially uh, Chicago history, so I can, I can add what I can, but, but it is mostly a health thing. Um, so as far as the last 10 years, so Chicago is interesting because it used to be one of the most polluted cities air-wise in the United States. So back in 1871, the Great Chicago Fire, there was, uh, so there's already some industry building up, but after the city burned down, or a large chunk of it, and they rebuilt it, they rebuilt with, at the time, modern industry, which was a lot of coal-fired electricity and uh, steam power, which ran on coal burning. So there was soot everywhere, and it, it was considered one of the worst uh, polluted cities in the world. I think second to Pittsburgh, maybe, and New York was up there. So it got to the point where there would be, uh, like, like it would block out the sun on certain days. It would there'd be soot that would get in storefronts, and you know the, they'd have to come out and like wipe down the windows and. Um, and also, they did some autopsies of people at the time. They found that they like, had black lung, kind of like coal miners, even, oh, wow. though, even though they weren't coal miners. So, um, so very early on, Chicago was one of the worst cities, but that was great in a way because it forced the, the government, uh, the city of Chicago, to spearhead clean air initiatives. So we were actually one of the first cities to have um, a, sort of a clean air revolution. Now, mind you, it took about 100 years for that to take, take role, uh, or, or actually... Um, 
have an impact. So around, uh, around 1970s, um, that's when a lot, of, a lot of actual legislation passed. And um, there, there was some legislation along the way, but when we really got into the 60s, it was like, okay, we've had enough of this newer technology. Um, so they started shifting some stuff around and um, a lot of the initiatives based on infrastructure, uh, more electricity for trains rather than coal-fired uh, trains. And, um, and just in general, cleaner technologies, less industry, and um, you know, automotive technology improved. So with that, uh, we actually became one of the cleanest cities. Um, I would say cleanest. Cleanest of some of the larger cities in the, in the United States because um, the worst are in California. Um, as, as progressive as they are with clean energy, and they've been forced to um, because they've had uh, air pollution. They've, they've not quite caught up to Chicago and, and some of the other cities. So now, fast forward, I guess, to where we are now, last 10 years. Um, not really a lot's changed, uh, in, in a good way. We've, we've actually improved our air quality and we're pretty much maintaining, but um, there are actually, the city of Chicago is, uh, the Department of Energy has a clean cities program, Chicago's part of that, and that's uh, identified by spearheading clean initiatives through um, infrastructure, so elect electric infrastructure for cars, technology, finding alternative fuels that are cleaner, uh, both for vehicles and also industry, and um, a, number of, a number of other programs throughout the city to help not only industries, but people. Um, so that uh, and a number of similar programs have been going on for the past probably 15, 20 years, some are a little bit newer. And so we've, we've continued to maintain um, our, our air quality, which is, which is pretty good. If you look at air quality scales, the air quality index, uh, Chicago's actually, I think our average, the scale's like zero to 500. Anything over 300 is like, you know, emergency, everyone goes inside. But anything up to like 50 or something is considered good. And we've actually, uh, we hover around 37, I think, 38 most days. Uh, now Chicago. If you look actually where Aurora University is, we're a little bit further away from the industry, so we actually have about the similar or a little bit better air quality. But um, yeah, so as far as that goes, we're actually in a good place. Now we do still have um, uh, like air warnings, air quality warnings for even Aurora, but Chicago. And that's not nothing to really get worried about. It's, it's when we creep into the, the next kind of moderate category, which is like, you know, for, for some people that are really young or really old or have lung problems, you might experience some uh, um, discomfort. Pain in the chest? Not exactly pain, but discomfort, you know, okay. breathing problems. Uh, maybe they have asthma that's triggered more easily. But, but realistically, it's not too bad. Um, so, you know, as, as far as are we really concerned about people's health, it's more like we want to keep the air good, not were you know like freaking out like some larger cities uh, abroad that you know you hear about in India and China where they've got uh, you know, like smog that I mean, you can't even see you know beyond a hundred feet because it's so bad. Well, that's good to hear. Only improvement from here on up. What are your feelings on how everyday routine has changed for college students walking to class in other countries and how being outside is even harmful for those students to walk to class? So you'll see in these pictures of them, they, they wear those masks, kind of like, uh, you know, like uh, illness masks where, you know, the, to you know, not spread germs. And it's to keep out particulate. So there, there are a few different kinds of air pollution. Uh, some are based on certain gases that are toxic to us, maybe from industrial waste. Most pollution worldwide, uh, even in those countries, is particulate. And that's why it looks hazy, because there's actually fine, think of it like dust floating in the air. And that particulate is really damaging to the lungs. And so you can actually block it out by wearing a really fine particulate blocking mask. Um, some people just wear like sheets or you know cloth, and that's you might catch the, the biggest stuff. Uh, but really, there's really fine particulate that you can't see, and so you have to get these special masks that are rated for it, and they actually sell out regularly. So you will see that they're they're trying to be proactive and that they understand it's bad, but life has to carry on. So you know they they try to wear these masks. So. Um, as far as the daily routine goes, I mean, it, you have to go to school, you gotta go to work. I mean, what else are you gonna do? It's gonna try to protect yourself the best you can. I even discussed with other students, such as even when you drive up to fast food and you have to roll your window down just to get 
food from the window inside your car, that's even harmful with particles coming in. It is, absolutely. Um, in fact, there's lots of research on this. Uh, if you drive in traffic versus driving on a less busy road, you're exposed to more particulate matter and, and volatile fumes that are bad for us. Um, I usually uh, would recommend that if you're going to be in especially stancil traffic or heavy traffic on the interstate or on town, turn the uh, air circulation on inside air. So if you, say, park in a less dense area and you start circulating that air, that's the air you keep while you're driving through the, uh, the more busy areas. Um, around Aurora University, it's not as bad because um, even what we might consider heavy traffic isn't that bad. But yeah, I mean, if you're driving down the interstate or, or walking and a car drives by, or especially like the, the big trucks that carry the rocks around here, and this, brrr, you know, the, the gray smog that comes out of the, out of the, the exhaust, um, or if you could smell it, it's like, yeah, like it's, you kind of choke a little bit. We actually have receptors in the lungs that when that particulate irritates them, uh, one of the reflexes is it keeps us from inhaling and actually tries to protect our lungs from, from that. But yeah, you might get a, um, hold your breath, yeah. <laughs> I guess. Um, try to walk uh, on streets that are not as busy. Um, I mean, but then we're, we're looking at like a little bit of exposure versus um, in the grand scheme of health, you know, a little bit, which is really nothing to really worry about, but maybe over the course of a lifetime it might add up. Um, but, you know, if people do want to take as many precautions as possible, they could certainly do those things. Uh, I will say, though, that there's been some other good research that even people living in cities, like in Chicago and other dense cities around the world, if you walk or bike to work, are you at some kind of uh, health disadvantage because you're actually breathing more air, because you're breathing heavier when you're exercising, even if you're just walking, versus being in a car driving to work? Is it actually bad for you to walk in those urban environments? Hmm. And for the most part, the research shows that exercise is overwhelmingly better. The benefits from exercise far outweigh the health detriments from the, uh, the air pollution. Now, during peak times like rush hour, it's actually not, you know? So if you are a cyclist or you do walk specifically as your main commute, try to go in off-peak times or on streets that are less busy. Okay. Uh, that's all the time we have for today with Professor Kane. Check out AUSpartanews.com for more news stories in the AU community like this. Thanks again for tuning in with Sal and I, and we'll see you next time on AU in View.